Hi friends, hi friends, welcome back to the channel for the people who have already subscribed my channel and for the people who have recently found my channel a hearty welcome to this channel. I am Yashwadhan, an electronic enthusiast and an electronic enthusiastic and electronic engineer who likes to work with electronic circuits and experiments with different kinds of electronic components. The topic of this video is the is this simple microcontroller board or the simple Arduino board that every engin electronic engineer in general but nowadays everyone everyone is using this to make the many projects now the board which you are seeing here is called the Arduino Uno board now before we dive into what exactly is the Arduino Uno and what are the different hardware components that are present on the Arduino Uno let me first give you a small gist idea a, a gist about the different applications of this Arduino Uno. Nowadays this Arduino Uno is used in a wide variety of fields. So for example, this Arduino Uno is used in robotics in order to make some uh, make some robots such as a, ha a hand gripping robot which is used to pick and pull up things. Second one, they Next, it is it's also used in robots, which are used to which move with a, with the help of a voice command. Third one, it is used in automatic vehicles, etc. Apart from this, this is other application, other field where this is used is a measurement instrumentation, uh, measurement and instrumentation in laboratories. Because this Arduino Uno is compatible with a large variety of sensors which can be used in order to measure a wide variety of quantity such as pressure, tack, speed, your acceleration then you can even measure the voltage, current, current magnetic, magnetic properties magnetic, uh, magnetic properties, inductance, capacitance of any components in the electronic apparatus or in general you can measure the pressure, acceleration in these in the mechanical labs also Next, this is also nowadays becoming widely prominent in home automation uh, projects where we are using this Arduino Uno in order to control all the appliances in the homes. Next, this is also used in the in industry where, where it is very really difficult for a person to work with, uh, with accuracy. So with the, with the uh, small idea of different applications of this Arduino Uno, let us dive into what exactly this Arduino Uno is. In general, whenever a person, in general, when they are saying about Arduino Uno, many people assume that this whole board is called the Arduino is a microcontroller board. But it is not a fact because Arduino is the name of the company and it is name of the company who manufactures this whole board. The main IC in the Arduino Uno is this Atmega 328P which is developed by AVR which is developed by AVR initially it, was, it is being produced by Atmegal but nowadays it is uh, being produced by microchip company so nowadays so let us begin now whenever you buy an Arduino new Arduino Uno from any uh, online shop or any offline shop like Amazon you can Amazon Flipkart or the Robocrace, Robocrace etc you along with this Arduino you know you'll also get a USB A USB A to B type of cable. In general, as as I mostly programmed the Arduino you know, with the help of my laptop or desktop, so it is more uh, this is convenient for me. But nowadays some people even like to program their Arduino Arduino you know, with the help of smartphones. Then they may require an adapter in order to uh, connect the connect your USB A type to your phone. Uh, with that out of way, and I have a future video on that topic also. Until then, you wait. Now let us move on to this hardware. Now, first of all, let us talk about this. As you can see, an Arduino Uno when you have it is looking like this. So first of all, let us talk about this. This is called the data transfer port or it is generally called a USB port and it is a USB B type of port where you need to connect this this the this end of the cable goes here 
Now the use of this port is in two ways. One way is to transfer the data from the Arduino Uno to your, uh, to your smartphone or laptop or your desktop. Other way is to power this Arduino Uno. That is, if you are, when you are in prototyping stage and you are just testing the different components, you can connect the, you can directly connect, hook up this Arduino Uno with your laptop and you can power this Arduino with the help of a laptop. But it is only useful whenever you are doing some prototyping or you are installing this Arduino in a place where there is the availability of systems. However, let us say that uh, in when once you are prototype, then you are you want to implement this in a real time situation. Then uh, you may not be sure that every time a system is available to the programmer. So in that case, in order to externally power, uh, <coughs> in order to externally supply the power, we'll be using this DC balladger. Now, in order to power using this DC balladger, you have two ways. Either you have some ways. One of the common ways is in the market, a uh, nine a uh, battery clip with the male header pin is available with this. Nowadays, even with the battery case also, this male header pin is attached to battery case and that is also being shown in the market. So you can directly attach this here. The other way is you can use any old charge old mobile phone charger which is having a male header pin uh, attached to it. And you can use that also to power. The third and third and very some people use this. What they do is if you turn if you turn this Arduino Uno, you will observe to the main header pin there are three pins. So what they do is they they shoulder the black wire here and the red wire here and they take it as positive and negative of this terminals. Now, if uh, let us say if you doesn't want to follow any other method, the other way in which you can power this Arduino Uno is by the help of this V in pin. This V in pin is provided in order to provide the external voltage. So either you can so so till now to just to summarize you till now we have learned about what is the use of this USB port, what is the use of this male header pin, and what is the how this V in pin is using. But what happens is that sometimes you may get a doubt that yes, should then it's okay that uh, sometimes I am be supplying. Sometimes what happens is that if you are supplying, if you are keep this Arduino no, in a real time situation. And let us say you initially uh, planned of using you are connecting a battery to this ma with mail header pin and you are connecting that you are power sub you are supplying that battery with the help of battery. But let us say suddenly the, in between of the application, suddenly your battery is run out of the voltage. Then what happens? Then some people what they do is when they implement in real time, they do one thing. They keep they they attach this battery to this male header pin. Apart from this, they also attach another voltage supply to this VN. But some may get a doubt that if you attach to, then the voltage will be very high. That's true. So the Arduino deals that with the help of this digital compressor IC that is present here. What this does is whenever you are supplying two kind of voltages, it compares the voltage at both these terminals. And whichever is the more, which is having more voltage, that is supplied to the Arduino Uno. Ideally, whenever we are talking about the supply, you can supply a voltage anywhere from 7 volts to 12 volts is recommended. However, the Arduino Uno is capable of handling a voltage of 20 volts also. But it is not recommended, but it is, it is, you can use it, it can handle that much amount of voltage. Next. So, as I have already told you, this is a this small digital comparator IC. I hope you are, you are able to see. Let me bring it close to here. This is called the small digital comparator IC, which is used to compare the voltage at this VIN pin and this male header pin. Okay. Now, next, next, you can see here, there are two volts. You can see whenever you are supplying this and the Arduino requires only 5 volts. Here also you can see you have only 5 volts and 3.3 volts output. So in order to regulate that voltage, we use this voltage regulator IC, which is a 5 volts voltage regulator IC. And this small one you are seeing here, it is a 3.3 volts voltage regulator IC. So as the name suggests, whenever whatever voltage is supplied, it regulates it to a 5, 
regulates that voltage and supplies an output of 5 volts and this supplies an output of 3.3 volts. However, if you see this, this voltage regulator IC in general a voltage regulator IC has only 3 pins but this one is having 5 pins. So what happens is that actually this voltage regulator IC takes 2 inputs and one input is for turning on and off this IC. So in order to turn an on or off IC, we are be using this MOSFET here. This small MOSFET is used to turn on and off the IC. Okay, friends. Now you have learned about this USB port. Now you have also learned about this mail header pin. You have learned about the function of this VIN, this 5 volts, 3.3 volts, and these both are the ground pins. And you also learned about this digital comparator IC and this uh, 3.3 volts regulator IC and this 5 volts regulator IC and this digital comparator IC. Next, if you see here, you have a, you will see that there is an orange color box you will have. This is nothing but a, this is a polycarbon fuse that is present. That is whenever you are supplying the voltage and some, somehow by mistake you are supplying more than the rec recommended current then this voltage, this fuse burns out and preventing the damage to this whole circuit. And apart from this, you are also having a small protection diode here. The diode is, whenever you are, by chance, if you are supplying a reverse voltage, that is, uh, due to some defect in the battery, battery clip, you, sometimes there might be interchange. That is, positive might be connected to negative and negative connected to positive and you are supplying that. That means you are supplying a reverse voltage. In order to protect that, we will be using this protection diode. Next, these two capacitors present here, these are used to store the car, store a small amount of charge and prevent the sudden 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 power failures. That is, suppose if you are connecting this your laptop and suddenly your laptop turns up due to car, due to the power fluctuation, then in order in that situation, the they, these two capacitors store the charges and slowly uh, turn off this uh, turn off this Arduino Uno preventing damage. Next. Next moving on let us see you will see that most of the in most of the videos you will see that there is this crystal oscillator that is present which is having 16 megahertz and so many people assume that you have a microcontroller which runs at 16 megahertz clock frequency so you assume that this 16 megahertz crystal is connected to this which is actually not true this is because initially when i used to work with this i also used to think but upon further research i have got to know that actually this 16 megahertz crystal is is the providing the clock cycle for this microcontroller right here and this small one if you can see as i bring close to the camera this small one is providing the required crystal clock frequency to this at mega 328p heart of this microcontroller i see okay so as i mentioned this small microcontroller you are seeing it is at mega 16u what this function is done whatever is the whatever you are transferring the code that code is code should be programmed with to this at mega to your uh, at mega this um, microcontroller i see so in order to program the code this small microcontroller what it does is it takes the code that is in hex format from here converts that and uh, converts to the format that is understood by this that that is understood and uh, which which is understood by this microcontroller and then is supplied that is in general when you are doing we are be supplying in terms of binary or hexadecimal but this should be programmed in CL, CL peripherals so in order to convert that we use this microcontroller IC next if you see here now to the to the right of this you will see there is a small button switch that is being present this button switch is called the reset switch that is whatever the program is running on the Arduino Uno if you want to reset the Arduino to start running the program from starting you can just either do you can press this button here or you have a small shoulder pad provider here you can just break this connection you will observe it is always connected you can just break this connection shoulder pad and that also sets the Arduino in reset state or you can supply a positive voltage to this reset pin so there are three ways of doing that next the set of header pins that you are seeing here these are used for the these are used for 
uh, in SPI communication apart from this this these are used for USB type of communication that is sometimes if you want to convert the con convert some additional USB device to this your program with other some other additional USB device you can use this uh, set of header pins here and these are called ICSP pins which are not by in circuit serial programming pins that is if you want if you are not willing to program this Arduino Uno with the help of this uh, with the help of laptop but you want to program this Arduino with the help of external programmer or with the help of your another Arduino Uno or Arduino Mega etc you can use these pins in order to program the Arduino Uno so now I hope friends you have you have learned about all the different almost all the components you have learned what is the use of this USB this mail header pin this uh, voltage aggregator ICs this digital comparator this um, polycarbon fuse uh, the MOSFET your USB your research button protection diode the capacitance then your um, two crystal oscillators crystal oscillators to provide the clock cycle for this for this and this one for this next uh, you have learned about this pin and you have learned about this pins also now if you observe here there are some LEDs that have been uh, printed on, that have been shown there these LEDs are this is TX that is whenever you are doing the CA communication whenever transmission of CA data is going on with this LED will turn on whenever reception of the serial data is going on this LED will turn on and whenever this this is an internal LED connected to pin number 13 whenever you are connect, whenever this pin is on this will glow on and this is a small LED that is present which uh, glows on whenever this Arduino turns on but in, as mine one mine is a little bit used one so and this is a very old one so this LED got burned down but the way Arduino is working so that's how this whole thing works now let us move our focus to the main controller IC this 8 mega 328p microcontroller IC so in general this 8 mega 328p microcontroller IC is a 28 pin IC in this this first one is the pin number one friends next if you see here this is a pin number one two pin number three four pin number five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, this is 13th pin and this is the 14th pin and this one pin number 15 if you see here pin num I hope friends you are seeing 15 this is pin number 16 pin number 17 pin number 18 pin number 19 pin number 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 and this is pin number 28 now if you observe here there is a small notch that is being present this indicates that this is your pin number one now if we move on to the different functionality of each of this pin this pin number one is nothing but the reset pin which is connected to this reset switch which is connected to this and this pin here pin number two is connected to digital pin number zero pin number three is connected to digital pin number one pin number four is connected to digital pin number two pin number 3 4 is connected to pin number 3 pin number 5 is connected to pin number 4 next this pin num next pin is the VCC pin and below is, is the ground pin next this pin number 9 and 10 to which you will be connecting your crystal oscillator circuit so by that only we can understand that this is not the crystal but this one small one is the crystal that is supplying the clock cycle for this next from pin number 11 is connected to pin number 5 12 is connected to pin number 6 13 is connected to pin number 7 and this 14 pin is connected to digital pin number 8 ok 10 pin is connected to 9 16 pin is connected to 10 this pin is connected to pin number 11 next this pin is connected to pin number 12 and pin number 19 is connected to pin number 13 ok next but 20 28th pin of this IC is the VCC pin again 21st pin is the analog reference pin which is connected to AD, A, this one AREF pin 21st pin now then the 22nd pin is the ground pin 
ट्वेंटी सेकेंड इज ग्राउंड पिन ट्वेंटी थर्ड पिन इज द ओके ट्वेंटी थर्ड नाउ अगेन फ्रॉम दिस इज फिफ्टीन सिक्सटीन सेवनटीन एटीन नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी टू दिस इज अ ट्वेंटी थर्ड पिन फ्रॉम दिस टू दिस सिक्स पिन आर कनेक्टेड टू दिस डिज एंड लॉक पिन दैट इज दिस पिन नंबर ट्वेंटी थ्री इज कनेक्टेड टू टू ए जीरो ट्वेंटी फोर टू ए वन ट्वेंटी फाइव टू ए टू ट्वेंटी सिक्स टू ए थ्री ट्वेंटी सेवन टू ए फोर एंड दिस ट्वेंटी एट पिन इज कनेक्टेड टू ए फाइव पिन सो दिस फाइव पिन आर फॉर द एंड लॉक डिजिटल पिन now let us analyze this rails separately now if you analyze this is the power rail because see this first one is to supply the internal power then there are two ground pins in actually there are six uh, three ground pins that are available on this arduino uno one is this ground pin here two ground and these two are the two ground pins that are available to us next this pin is to take our 5 volts output this is for 3.3 outputs 3.3 volts output if you want you can take from this pin this is a reset pin which is used to reset the arduino uno the next is the io reference pin this io reference pin is to give some any kind of reference voltage to the digital pins that is in general when you are we talking about the digital circuit we generally talk the When you are saying a logical zero in logical zero in a digital circuit, we assume it to be zero volts, and logical one we assume it to be the uh, highest power, highest voltage that is uh, five volts. Okay, but if we in general if we want to add some reference voltage such that whatever the voltage is below the reference voltage, it should be logical zero. Above the reference voltage, it should be logical one. So then we can supply that reference here for this digital pin. similarly when you are uh, dealing with analog signals and you want to add some any analog voltage from 0 to 5 volts as your uh, reference out voltage you can give it to this a reference pin here now coming on these are the digital pins column here this is digital pin number 0 1 2 3 so on up to pin number 13 out of which this digital out of which this digital pin number 0 and pin number 1 These are used for the serial data input and output. That is, pin number one is used for transferring the serial data, and pin number zero is used for receiving the serial data. Next, apart from this, this pin number three, five, six, nine, ten, and eleven. These are used to provide the PWM signal. PWM signal means pulse width modulator signal. This is a type of signal which is used to control the speed of a motor. or control the rotation of an arduin or rotation of a servo motor or you can control the brightness of an led etc with the help of these pins i have some projects lined up which use these pins also so stay tuned to the channel next apart from this the other one can be used for digital inputting and digital outputting of this signals Now, if you are saying that these header pins are not enough, and you want some other header pins also, you can connect here for programming purposes. Programming purposes. So now, friends, I hope you have gained a good idea about the different hardware components that are present on the Arduino Uno, and what is the purpose of each of these components. If you have any doubt related to this, please feel free to come ask me in the comment section below. or you can mail me at the mail id given below now friends i hope you are with that out of way now i hope friends you have gained a good understanding about the hardware component of the arduino uno and i have already explained that in order to power you can use this 9 volts battery along with this pin now friends let me tell you one thing now whenever you buy a new arduino uno or any arduino for that matter Whenever you uh, firstly power this, you observe always this uh, inbuilt LED turns on and off. This is because whoever designs and this Arduino Uno, they in order to see that this Arduino is working, uh, always a pre-built, pre-programmed one program will be always there. That is the blinking of this LED for one second and offing or and turning off within for other second. So. By that also you can verify that you are whatever the Arduino you are buying is a good one or not. 
and sometimes if it is a very new Arduino, you you see this, this also turns on. Mine is a little used one, so this LED is, uh, LED is damaged, so it is not going on, but the Arduino is working up. So now friends, you I hope you have gained a good understanding about how exactly this Arduino is working. Now let me show you one thing. If you are really, if you are an AdRock engineer and you are really want to make sure that your Arduino is power is being uh, correctly supplied. To do that, let's let me show you one thing. Now, friends, I have bought my multimeter here in order to show you the show you in a better way. So what we do is you just connect the Arduino and keep it in the the lowest voltage rating and just connect this power okay and when you turn here and you want to make sure it which is the positive and which is the negative just keep it like this so if you see a negative on the multimeter that means you are connecting the probes in reverse order that is you need to connect your positive here and negative here see 8.53 which is the voltage I am supplying similarly if I check here this is a ground pin, so it is not showing anything. Okay, see. So this is ground and this is the voltage pin. So both pins it shouldn't, if you are connecting, they should show zero volts ideally. And between these two, it should be the voltage. So from this also, you can, uh, you can verify this Arduino is working perfectly fine. Similarly, if you see here, you see a zero volt. But if you are seeing here, you can see that it is a rectified voltage whatever the voltage you are supplying it is being rectified sorry it's a inverted end so you should see you are getting approximately 3 volts similarly if you check here you get approximately 5 volts and you should always remember that this is this and this will be inverted to each other that is if you are checking this here this is positive and this is the negative terminal for 5 volt, this is a positive terminal and this is a negative terminal. Wait a minute. Yeah. See, between this two, the voltage is 5 volt. That is this 5 volt cigarette output and this is the 8 volt cigarette output. Now, friends, another thing which I forgot is that whenever you are working with I2C communication, you will be familiar with two terms. What is serial data and serial clock? In order to provide for the Arduino Uno, for each Arduino Uno, the pins are different, which provide the serial data and serial clock. For the Arduino Uno, it is either a, you can connect to A4, which is your SDA pin, and a, A5, which is SCL pin. Otherwise, here also you'll be provided with two extra male, female header pins. This is for SDA and this is for serial clock. So that's how it is working. So now I hope, friends, you have gained a good understanding about this hardware. Okay friends, now as, this, as uh, this video has become a long one, here I have covered only the hardware part of this Arduino. In the next video, I will cover the software part of this Arduino Uno. So now friends, I hope you have liked my explanation and you have gained a good understanding about the different components of the Arduino Uno. If you have any doubt, please feel free to comment that down below. If you want to know, any, if you want me to do a video on any particular topic in electronics, please feel free to comment that down below and I will make a video on that topic. I hope friends you have liked my explanation. I hope you liked my explanation. If you like my explanation, please share it with your friends. Do subscribe my channel to see more such videos and like, please like this video. And thank you friends. Thanks for watching friends and I will meet you again in a new video with a new topic with a new topic until then stay until then thank you friends and have a nice day